Hi friends, Phil here. <laughs> I am walking through a local park here in my neighborhood. Very nice local park. And uh, I just wanted to talk about the situation with drumming and being in Los Angeles. As you know, I am in Los Angeles again. And uh, you know, I've been going through many thought processes and seeing what's happening in the world and measuring you know the ROI let's say return on investment on being in a place like Los Angeles or New York for that matter where cost of living is so insanely high now it's gotten completely out of control and uh, what is the return on investment for your career in drumming in coming to a place like this okay so there are more musicians here let's say Let's say great musicians, okay? There is that. So that's something that you can cultivate and make relationships and play with great players. Um, what else is there? There are a few places to go see music, you know? <laughs> not, not many left, actually. But uh, that's something that... Uh, that's a positive thing, although, you know... You know, I'm trying to, to look at these positive things as something important. But what's the reality, you know? I mean, I don't want to brag. But I don't, you know, I'm not this bragging guy. But I know a lot of great players, like, personally. And we talk about these things a lot, you know, almost on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, the conclusion that uh, most of us are reaching is that First of all, the music business itself is kind of over, you know, it's kind of like the way obviously it was 20 years ago even, it just doesn't exist anymore. So it's, it's like a, there has to be there's this constant readjustment in your mind to what's going on today. And now, you know, the, the new thing that everybody's worried about is AI, AI, you know. <laughs> I personally personally find this this whole thing quite despicable, you know, that you can just sample a little bit of somebody and make a whole song out of out of that sample. Anyway, that's I don't want to get too far into it, but the return on investment issue. Now, in a big place like this, when all these things are going on, the music industry is completely upside down. You know, if you could know anything about the Spotify for example or any streaming service you know that we're all very dissatisfied with that that whole situation but uh, is it worth it to stay in LA or New York or wherever when in a place like where I was in Argentina you can live really well on very little dollar amounts you know, if you have dollars, if you're making money online, if you're, you know, playing, uh, selling music online, doing whatever it is you do online, you can live really well. <laughs> and they have socialized medicine. Medicine doesn't cost an arm and a leg, you know, if something happens to you, uh, which is sooner or later things happen, you know. Or you can live in Italy, where it's also the same thing, where cost of living is just so much lower. Now, all right, these places don't have the musicians that are here, right? But what are we doing as musicians here? I feel like that if you're not like a legacy musician at this point, that the return on investment on a, on a place like this just not worth it, you know. I, I look at, uh, let's say, legacy musicians, you know, you know what I mean? Famous guys and guys that are very well established, done a million records and movie dates and stuff like that. I mean, you know, they have their houses and they have their situations, but I've also talked to them a lot. And there's this feeling of dissatisfaction you know no matter no matter how much money you have or how much material wealth you've gained over the years you know there's just there's this sense of 
dissatisfaction. Okay, so what is it you need to do in order to have a proper return on investment in your career? You know, let's say you want to do it in a certain city, New York, or whatever. let's face it, I talk to guys in New York and very well known players, they just tell me that it's not worth it at this point. <laughs> The music scene being the way it is after the pandemic, you know, so many places closed and so many things changed and the perceived value of music even has changed, you know, with, with of course, with the advent of AI and everything, we're even going through a, a weirder shift now. And, uh, you know, what do you do about this? Well, from my perspective, you know, I'm, I'm somebody, I would, uh, somebody said to me the other day, Phil, you're, you're like the original digital nomad because you've been playing all over the world nonstop for the last 20 years, whatever, some, before anybody else was doing that, <laughs> you were doing it. And it's true, actually. So when, I, when I'm faced with the prospect, because of, you know, personal reasons, whatever, I have to be in LA, I have to like base myself in LA. I'm not too happy about that. I'm not happy about it at all. So, my friends, here's a little analogy for you. Where is the playing field? Where is the playing field? Okay, you want to get in the game. Where is the field? I don't feel that it's in a major music hub necessarily you know i mean i look at a guy like there's this guy from spain estepari or something like that he's causing great sensation in the drumming scene online you know he's millions of drummers are watching him and he you know he's doing something with his drumming you know it's just not it's not uh, i mean it's not for everybody right but he's doing it I mean, not, not, I'm not for every, everybody either. So, how do you judge, you know, your life quality against your career and against everything that is happening in the music industry? What is going to inspire you to put in the proper amount of practice time you need to get better and for what? You know, what for? I got a lot of my students asking me right now, what for when all this stuff is going on oh my god i really want to do this you know i really want to play drums and it's so hard and blah 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 the playing field the playing field now we have to use our imaginations a little bit with this if you've seen my other videos you know you you know that i've said this from the beginning you can't be in drumming for money, all right? You've got to be in it because you don't have a choice. It overwhelms you. It's your greatest passion. You can't live without playing. I was just playing without, with another great player out here, Bob Shepard, and a saxophonist. And we were talking about this. And he's like, man, I got to play. I got to continue to play. So we get together at his house and we have sessions. You know, that's a very common thing to do sessions and you just get together and just play you know not in a club at, at people's houses you know it's a very common thing to do you just play a bunch of standards and you keep your chops up and you know it's like photographers doing collaborations with people models or whatever to keep your chops going and try out new ideas and stuff like that it's a very necessary thing so you don't do that for money you do that for your art and money comes because of this constant creative flow that you're having right <laughs> now <laughs> what level of money varies right it varies but you absolutely have to have in mind that you don't do this for the money you have to do it for the spiritual aspect okay what it makes you feel like in life or else there's no point 
As you know, you probably know many people that have a lot of money and they're miserable pigs, you know? So what does that all mean after, you, you know, you're gonna sacrifice your whole life to be a musician and maybe if you don't have your head on straight, you know, it can eat you alive and make all kinds of problems in your life with your relationships and stuff. You know, you have to be, you have to be straight, especially on the issue of return on investment, ROI. I want you to remember that. The biggest ROI is that which gives you peace, all right? That should be the bottom line to use <laughs> a metaphorical financial terms <laughs> because the way things are going, nobody knows what's gonna happen. And I said, like I said before, unless you're a legacy musician, you know, mm, it's gonna be tough. Unless you get lucky in a band or something, well, that's still happening. But let's say you do get lucky in a band and, you know, that band lasts for a year or two years. What then? And maybe you're like super lucky and you're like, you know, have an incredible success in your band. You last for 20 years. Okay, that's another story. But it's like one out of a million, you know, one out of 10 million. <laughs> There's a lot of numbers in financial uh analogies metaphors going around but uh it's important right now and the way i'm feeling right now being in la where or a crummy apartment it's like two thousand dollars ridiculous amount of money and to buy a car is a super expensive and gas and i mean it's just ridiculous to live here you know i can't bring myself to understand why i should invest in this city and try to live you know in a decent way comfortably when it's so expensive and and the roi has nothing to do with being here you know what i mean what does it have to do with being here okay if i'm a young guy and i never played with anybody before that's one story but i've already done all that stuff you know I guess the point of that is, depending on your career path, your career point in, in the journey, you can make decisions that are gonna help your career. But I mean, at great sacrifice, you know, being in LA and New York, it's a sacrifice. I have a buddy of mine that's been at it, you know, for whatever, 12 years in New York, and he's still living with five guys in an apartment. <laughs> I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be doing that, man. I'd much rather be, you know, doing my own gigs, playing all over the world, playing different places, you know, being more in control of my career than not leaving it up to chance, you know, or whoever I meet, somebody, this guy, that, that's, that's chance to me. Whoever meets you, whoever likes your playing and they, they vouch for you. I mean, well, that's a whole other issue. You know, when you get to a place, a big city where there's tons of musicians, it's almost like it nullifies how good you are. It doesn't even matter how good you are. It's who you know, who you're friends with, who is on your side really, you know. And even if you're great and you give people work, you give work to this guy, you give work to that, sometimes they never call you back. You know, they don't return the favor. They use their friend or their favorite guy or whatever. So those are all issues that we are confronted with. You have to answer these questions in your heart eventually. ROI, what's it mean to you? You know, because the last thing you want to do is reach a point where you've had it with drums and you want to give up drumming or stuff like that. You know, that's the whole purpose of this talk, I guess. Because I've seen guys that quit drumming and they are even more miserable than before. Or they really regret it. Once it's in your blood, it's like impossible to get it out, you know literally you're putting your life in danger if you try to to get it out of your system unless you've already done something you know with it you said you, what you want to say whatever but it's dangerous to let it go halfway or even a quarter away whatever it's not healthy so 
Is it worth it to stay in a big city? In my opinion, not anymore. I think the internet has changed a lot for everybody. And I look at guys that are successful online, like the Barrio, this guy from Spain. And I applaud that. I mean, even to achieve that, that that's not like a coincidence, you know. He had to work hard to get all those followers, to get those uh, people to like what he's doing. And uh, he had to practice his butt off and he had to learn how to do videos and do th and play, you know. So that's the story, my friends. I'm out here in a local park. We're trying to talk about where's the playing field. <laughs> ROI and things like this because these are important career discussions I, like I said I maybe you maybe you don't have someone you can talk to about these things I do and I, I fortunately I have friends that have been around for a very 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 long time and they're top players around the world oh helicopter I wonder what police chase is happening now <laughs> in LA <laughs> that's another factor you know crime in the city cost of living homeless there's a homeless guy right there sleeping who wants to live like this I certainly don't to be honest I put music first not lifestyle first so that's my opinion. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you want to join the lesson site and study for real, learn what the pros know, not waste your time doing things that you're never going to use in music. Some sites are great at that, giving you all the stuff that you're never going to use in music, but it's easy to sell. Okay? <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't do that. I, I teach people things that they are going to use, that is going to give them ROI. All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Peace.